Good evening, brothers. My name is Rob Cadill, the Fraternity Senior Director of Graduate Development and Operations. And I want to thank you for joining us on tonight's webinar. We have an important discussion this evening around what's next for Phi Gamma Delta. Much of what we'll talk about was introduced at the Fiji Academy in January, but we recognize that not every brother can attend. And we want to have a chance to have that same direct conversation for everyone and for you all to hear directly uh, from fraternity leadership about where we're going next. Joining me tonight are Archon President Brian Douglas, Archon Counselor Colby Owens, and Executive Director Bill Martin. We'll spend about half our time tonight talking about what's next for Phi Gamma Delta and leave the second half for your questions, which you can submit via the questions tab on your screen. You can submit those questions at any time. When we reach that portion, I will ask your questions audibly to Bill or the, one of the Archons, but we do ask that you identify your school and office when you submit those questions. And with that, brothers, I'm going to turn it over to Executive Director Bill Martin to get us started tonight. Bill? Thank you, Rob. Good evening, brothers. Before we get around to talking about what's next for Phi Gamma Delta, I think we should sort of set the stage for uh, what is happening today uh, in our world, uh, in the environment in which we operate. The Greek system, as I think you probably know, is facing a number of challenges. Uh, you've likely seen them in the news or, or some of these things may have been happening on your campuses. Uh, 2017 saw the death of four fraternity pledges at Penn State, uh, LSU, Florida State, and Texas State as a result of alcohol consumption and hazing, pledge activities uh, of their particular chapters. Uh, these occurrences have, have ignited a scrutiny of bad practices uh, that sometimes happen among fraternities, both certainly on the campuses where those tragedies occurred, uh, but across North America. Some schools are even taking a preemptive step of suspending all fraternity activity, sometimes for months at a time, uh, in response to uh, a higher level of sensitivity uh, due to those tragedies and also in response to particular incidents or events short of tragedy uh, on their particular campuses. And this is being done without consideration of the, uh, the, the behavior or the rights of those frater fraternity chapters that have been doing a good job and, and have had no violations. So the bad actors are being punished along with the, the groups that are trying to do a good job. The universities are taking a much closer look at their policies and procedures to make sure that they feel they can comfortably support uh, a, a Greek system that's going to contribute to their campus and contribute to the experience of their students and the members. While these events and challenges that we're facing uh, are, are or, or the events are new and current, the challenges themselves are old. Challenges related to hazing and alcohol and drug abuse in particular are things that we've faced in the Greek system for many years. There are some other challenges that have arisen more recently uh, that we're facing as well. Things like sexual assault on campus, uh, uh, a challenge to be more diverse and inclusive, and just the challenge every day to prove that fraternity life uh, in the 21st century is still relevant to our campuses and relevant for the experiences of the students who may choose to join. Because, because we are Phi Gamma Delta, because we are leaders uh, in the, in the uh, fraternity movement, uh, we accept these challenges, we face them head on and with courage because we see an opportunity to lead uh, in a situation such as this and we want, to, we want to face up to these challenges. We believe also that Phi Gamma Delta as a values-based organization, we, we have a lot to offer to students and that Phi Gamma Delta and what we have to offer as an experience is more than important than ever. And we need to protect the right to provide that to our members and to future students. Uh, you've likely heard of our 170 by 170 growth initiative begun around 2006, uh, aiming uh, with a goal of having one, being on 170 campuses by our 170th anniversary. With that deadline or goal of, of May 1st, uh, 2018 now being just uh, a few short months away, we now know that we will not achieve that objective of being on 170 campuses. We'll be on about 165. The primary reason that we will miss achieving this goal is that since the fall, 
we have had five chapters that we have had to close because of either haz hazing in four instances and uh, an alcohol and party violation uh, in the in the uh, in the fifth instance. So we will not achieve our goal. Uh, the things that we see going on in the broader environment and then these experiences that we've had with this extraordinary number of chapters that we've had to close in recent months are just all collectively indications that we are at an inflection point. We're at a pivotal moment uh, for, for, for Phi Gamma Delta and for the fraternity system. The Archons recognizing this factored all of this into the development of a, our strategic priorities that we're going to talk with you about in the next few minutes. And with that, I'll turn it over to Archon President Brian Douglas to talk about where we're headed uh, with our strategic priorities and what's next for Phi Gamma Delta. Brian? Thanks, Bill. Good evening, brothers. Our initial effort, as Bill mentioned, really was to lay out the facts of where we are now. We asked some pretty big, broad questions. Um, first of which was, how can we keep growing? How can we enhance the value all brothers get from Phi Gamma Delta? How do we lead on our campuses and, and in the international Greek community? How do we better engage you, our undergraduates, and our graduate volunteers? How do we continue to ensure the longevity of our fraternity? Let's go back to our purpose, mission, and vision for just a moment. These really helped guide us. <clears throat> Because vision is the most powerful tool that a courageous leader has, we started there. A vision is a compelling view of who we will be and what we will accomplish. What we aspire to achieve is to be an active, vital force of men who courageously live our values and make a positive impact on college and community. If I wanted to quickly sum up what our roadmap is all about, it's actually pretty easy. It's all about you and your experience, about making your experience richer and deeper and connecting us all together as brothers. Our path forward is a value-based strategy to achieve positive impact. It is an outward-facing focus on what we do for the world. Phi Gamma Delta unites men in enduring friendships, stimulates the pursuit of knowledge, and builds courageous leaders who serve the world with the best that is in them. Let me go back to our purpose for a moment, to build courageous leaders. For us to deliver on that, we must evolve how we support you in that development so that we can collectively make the biggest impact. There are four focus areas, what we're calling must-win battles that we've identified. First is maximize value. Value creation for our members, the college and community is the essence of our vision for positive impact. Value is what attracts and keeps members. It's also what attracts and maintains relationships with university administrators, community citizens, campus organizations, and the range of other stakeholders who are critical to our chapter's long-term success. To cause value to rise, we don't need to know precisely what maximum value is, but we must have an idea of better. I want to share some goals that we've set for ourselves. First is scholarship. We'd like 80% of our chapters to be above the all men's average on each campus. Next is service. We're striving for 25 hours per man per year. To give you a frame of reference, the average college man does about 10 hours. Phi Gamma Delta is right around 16. The easiest way to think about this is look at what your chapter did last year or last semester and try to get one more hour per man. With regard to charitable giving or philanthropy, we're striving for two and a half million dollars raised annually. Again, Phi Gamma Delta is sitting right around 1.8 million, a really great metric. Again, probably $150 a man if you want to think about it in terms of chapter goals. Lastly, campus involvement. We'd like to have 90% of our members in every chapter actively involved in a campus organization. That's how we spread the influence of Phi Gamma Delta. The realization of what is possible is only limited by our willingness to try for better. And something that's important to reiterate here, our 170 by 170 strategy was about growth, but our go forward approach relies more heavily on you, your active role in the fraternity and driving towards these goals with your chapter. Next is empowered accountability. 
fundamental to building courageous leaders is the concept of teaching our brothers the why behind everything they are asked to do and not do. When members understand why, they become empowered to take responsible actions. For our fraternity to achieve its vision, the full potential of every single member in your chapter must be realized. Empowered brothers who are accountable to respect each person in their decisions and actions are far more likely to make good decisions when faced with testing points. A couple of goals in this area. We want to be known for having the best in-class record versus, te versus testing point issues, whether that's alcohol or sexual assault or any of those myriad things that affect a fraternity's reputation. We've made an investment in a business-grade learning management system which will allow us to do certification and training for our officers and key chairmen and for our advisors. You brothers are very familiar with learning online, and so we know this is something that will add to the educational benefit that we provide already today with our in-person education. Our third must-win battle is know the student best. Knowing and understanding the expectations of members is the overarching rule of an exceptional brotherhood. Chapter leaders that possess this knowledge can align the chapter organization and brothers' hands-on experience in a way that creates personal insight, development, and a shift in mindset and engagement. You actually shape the way our men think about fraternity to create positive membership experiences. A positive membership experience as a student is the key to having fantastic flourishing chapters, abundant graduate volunteers, and growing our graduate chapters. Some goals in this area. Today, our new member retention is sitting right around 83%. We think we can drive this up to 90%. We're also going to implement some technology tools that allow us to gauge how well we're matching our fraternal experiences to our expectations. So we're going to create what we're calling a promoter score to measure that. We're also working on our advisor to undergraduate ratio. Many of you have heard of 551. Essentially, this is the next step of having a 1 to 10 advisor to undergraduate ratio, with a minimum for three at our smaller chapters. Another area that we're going to begin measuring is how many of our brothers actually complete four years of active undergraduate membership, because we think if they're having a positive experience, we'll have more of those brothers continuing their activity all the way through their undergraduate years, and will be more likely to be involved as graduate advisors or members of graduate chapters. Finally. Our last must-win battle is we must expand smartly. Growth is strength when it results in the organization growing better and smarter. Quantitative growth, in terms of the number of members, chapters, or campus share, are externally visible changes in the organization. and something you all are very familiar with. Qualitative growth is more difficult to define. It's associated with the process of organizational learning and transformation. The strength of our chapter's operations will determine whether that growth is sustained or whether internal constraints reign in that growth prematurely. Ultimately, success and growth will be gauged by how well an organization does relative to the goals it has set for itself. Phi Gamma Delta today is only on 20% of the 800 campuses with Greek systems. As Bill mentioned, we've made an amazing growth since we began the 170 by 170 initiative. To give you a frame of reference, when we started that initiative, there were only 700 campuses with, with Greek systems. That's grown by 100 in the last decade, in that same period of time where we've grown by 60. So we're going to continue our pace of colonizations, somewhat moderated from where we started. Which we, when we started 170 by 170, it was typically eight to nine colonizations per year. We're going to continue at a pace of six through 2030. If we manage to achieve that pace, and bring down the attrition rate, we will be at 230 campuses by 2030. Now, growth isn't just about new undergraduate chapters. We also want to strengthen existing chapters and support their development. One way we measure this is by what we call a chapter performance indicator. Today, this measure of health is 60, sitting at 69.9%. We want to get that up to 90%. Finally, Another thing that will impact you directly is average chapter size. Today, we're sitting at 68 members, which is more than when we started the 170 by 170 initiative. But from our experience, we believe that our average chapter size 
can and should get up to 74. Now, many of you are in smaller chapters where well, that's just not realistic on your campus. Simpler goal for you is can you grow by 10% year over year? This model that you're seeing on your screen now summarizes the guiding principles of our vision and our strategy. First, create value for our members, that's you, the college and community. Second, know member expectations and connect with positive fraternal experiences. Third, execute growth that results in the organization growing better and smarter. And last, involve and empower every member. These are our must-win battles because they will determine whether Phi Gamma Delta continues to grow and flourish and it has, is full of meaning for you and for a new generation of brothers to come after you. Our work now is actually to move the fraternity towards that better place where we want to be. I'll hand it off to Colby at this point. Good evening, brothers. As we mentioned, this strategy and approach not only comes to life with your buy-in and engagement. We do not want this to feel like some unchangeable grand plan, but a living thing that needs your attention and ideas to succeed. Our job, the Archons and staff, is to support these efforts by helping to set goals and giving you the tools, resources, policies, and support to succeed. To this end, there are a few bigger ticket items we can talk about um, that are currently underway as part of our roadmap. First, we've convened a task force led by Archon Jim Link to take on an effort that we are calling Project Zero, aimed at creating new approaches to prevent hazing in Phi Gamma Delta. He's brought together a cross-section of brothers, including myself, to help devise programs and ideas. More to come. You may have also seen our responsible action protocol we released a few weeks ago. It's a protocol that essentially says the international fraternity will not pursue individual discipline for any brothers who do, who do the right thing in emergency situations where a brother or a pledge needs help, such as calling 911 for brothers or pledges who may have hurt themselves while drinking. By the end of March, the fraternity will launch its new learning management system, that online learning program, to offer training and resources more broadly and more conveniently for our brothers. Initially, it will offer resources related to health and safety concerns, primarily pointed towards our graduate volunteers, uh, but its offerings will expand to include other topics geared towards undergraduates in the near future. You'll hear more about how our fraternity leaders will drive us forward, but we need your help. Our call to action for you is this. We want you to start thinking about how you and your chapters can begin to deliver on these four areas and continue to and continue building courageous leaders uh, to deepen the membership experience. In particular, Brian shared new targets we're reaching for, and we want you to, we want to encourage you to implement a game plan with your chapter to help us meet them. Again, I'll outline those. Scholarship, we want 80% of chapters above the campus all men's average. Service, we'd love to see 25 hours per man per year. Philanthropy, we want to see $2.5 million raised annually for charity as an organization. And with campus involvement, 100% of chapters have at least 90% of brothers actively involved in a campus or community organization. We also want to hear your ideas. Get in touch with us. We expect this to be just the beginning of the conversation. We recognize and value the critical role you play in the development of our chapters and in the success of our fraternity. It's your example that makes all the difference. The change starts with you. Thanks for listening, and we'll now move on to the question portion.